Hey, I'm Zach McDonald, your real estate agent with Real Property Associates. And I wanna start this update off by saying, we're not at the top of the market. I'm gonna say it again, we're not at the top of the market. There's been, and again, this is my opinion, but there's been a lot of conversation in the media recently. And it's interesting how the media puts it, then they're gonna put it similar to like I would, right? You're gonna qualify everything because you don't wanna be able to look back and say, oh, they were wrong. But what they're saying is, man, it seems like market slowing down, which it is and does every time this year. And granted, it's started a little bit earlier, but you have this um, you know, new inventory come on and what they, they, they wanna get clicks, right? So you're getting all these clicks and then I read these articles and they're all saying, well, you know, it's probably just gonna be a short term after talking with experts, we actually think it's gonna start to go back up again and we're not gonna see any kind of a crash. So a lot of these articles, you read the, if you, all you do is read the heading, you go, and then you click it and you read it and they go, yeah, there's more housing inventory. There's more, there's really not a lot less buyers in the market, but there's more inventory. So you have less competition, which means the prices aren't shooting up and the prices are either kind of staying flat or even going down a little. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later on in the update, but I just want to kind of put that out there. I don't think this is the top of the market, um, which is partly why maybe we're seeing some more listings is because people are concerned about that. So you read the news, you go, oh my gosh, this is the top, I got a list now. Now we have more homes on the market, right? So we'll start off with a story now, right? We'll transition to that because if you're new to this, that's how I start off every one of these updates. I don't normally talk at the beginning. The story this month is some buyers that I met about six months ago or so. They <laughs> were across the street from my house, looking at the house across the street for sale. And they showed up in this cool car and they were looking around. And I was like, hey, you know, they were out of flyers. Like, hey, you know, do you guys know how much this house is going for sale? And they were asking me, I was about to go walk with my family. And I was like, well, I do, you wanna see it? And yeah, sure, let's go on. So we showed the house, talk about it. Turns out they've made countless offers, lost out. We're a little bit bummed about their situation and thinking maybe they weren't even gonna be able to buy a house. So a couple months later, right? At that point, they had an agent, I think, they were working with and they, they called me a couple months later and said, hey, Zach, we wanna talk, we wanna, we wanna potentially work together, right? So we meet up, talk, come up with a strategy and again, another you know, while goes on, a little, a little bit of time. And we don't, we don't jump into making offers on things, right, that they don't like, but they're methodical. And I think they took a great approach to this process. We weren't making offers on everything that maybe could be a good, good thing, right? We were doing our due diligence. There was one offer they made in a situation uh, on one of my listings and I had another agent help them out. But the first offer that we got to make together was a little over three weeks now ago and we got the house. There was some competition, right? I did an offer review about this recently and we can link it up here below the video. But a little over, it was like 25, a little over 25,000 above asking price, really competitive uh, terms. And they got the house. So a couple days ago, they closed. Last week, they closed on the house. Super excited, we had to do a rent back, right? So in all of this, there's still homes that are selling over the asking price. You just have to, it has to be the good ones. The, the other ones aren't selling. And I think in this story, it really does exemplify that fact that there are still homes that are selling quickly. And when we talk about the stats, you'll see that but not every house is jumping off the shelf, just the good ones. So now we'll talk about the stats. Some of you are here for that. And as far as median sales price goes, we're actually up in the city of Seattle almost 8% from the same time last year. You didn't hear 12 or 13, right? And I don't think that's something to be worried about. The rest of the year, I think we are gonna see, right at the beginning you do your predictions, and I think right now we're gonna see a little bit more gradual growth and typically the end of the year, we see a little bit of a trail off. So stay tuned, but I think we're gonna be seeing numbers closer to this rather than that 12, 13. But when you average it together for the whole year here, watch this, over the last 12 months, so when you average them together, since last July, we're up 13.6% on an average. So if you put all the numbers together. Now back to the monthly shoreline, it's up 8.7%, Edmonds 5.9 as a whole, and then Linwood almost 14%. So we're still, still up quite a bit, but the trends have gone a little bit down. And I wanna share a couple reasons I think why. So first of all, we've seen a lot more homes come for sale. And 
looking at the numbers, you, you had it from the same time last year, almost 57% more homes for sale. Shoreline's up 58%, Edmonds 23%, and Linwood almost 80%. So there's a lot more homes for sale all of a sudden. Part of that, I think, is that fear that I mentioned. Like, oh, maybe we're at the top. I gotta list my house now. Whereas maybe they would have waited till September or October, waited it a little bit longer. Now they're just getting it on now. So my thought here is that as the rest of the year progresses, what we're gonna see is a slow downtick in the inventory, right? And the inventory, I think, is another interesting number to look at. So when we talk about months of supply inventory, right? So there's a there's a, a pendulum, right? If it's a seller's market, you have lower inventory. Typically, the seller has negotiating power. In a buyer's market, there's more inventory and the buyer has more negotiating power, right? And in this situation, what we've seen is more inventory. So there's about 60% more inventory in Seattle than the same time last year, 64% more in Shoreline, and a little less in Edmonds, more like 14%, and then another 60% in Linwood. So a lot more inventory. But it's not that dramatic. I mean, it sounds dramatic, but you only have maximum like 2.3 months in Shoreline, and, and Edmonds and Seattle are 1.6 months, which is still really low. And so that's why we're still seeing multiple offers, competitive situations. I've had a few offers in the last couple of weeks where we still had multiple offers, but then also some where just the asking price or even negotiating down a little bit. So not every house is getting multiple offers and having and selling really quick, but to put it in perspective, two months of inventory is still really low and our market is still a really hot real estate market. But again, it, it does matter. Is your house one of those awesome ones where you're gonna get multiple offers or is it, is it on a busy road? Or is it in, maybe the location's not amazing. Those houses aren't selling as quickly. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So to sum this all up, I don't think we're at the top of the market. I do think the rest of the year, we're gonna see a little bit more inventory come on, maybe staying in this same ballpark. And then as we head into the next year, right? These are predictions. I think as we head into next year, again, we're gonna start to see inventory levels typically go down in the late, late fall, early winter. We're gonna see those numbers start to get back down. And then we might start to see the pendulum swing in the other direction where we start to see more competition. And we might look back on this and go, oh, it was just a blip on the radar. So those are my thoughts right now. Again, time will tell, but that's what I think. So thanks for watching. Again, if you have real estate needs or questions or wanna talk about the market, I'd love to be a resource for you. If you want, you can just comment down below. I'd love to engage with you in that way as well. And again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.